Hello everyone, it's Tom the Taxi Driver and in this video I want to talk about all the tips and tricks I've learned since driving a cab. So little tips and tricks that you've learned in the cab. Unfortunately some of these do come the hard way but this is the great thing about learning from your mistakes. Once you've made that mistake once you're going to learn from it and you're going to become a better person from it. So one tip that seems quite obvious, but sometimes you can be a bit lazy to actually put into action, is that if someone comes up to the window and you can't understand them, or you're not quite sure on the point they're trying to give you, ask them, do they have it in writing? You will find a lot of tourists um, who aren't native to England or English speaking will sometimes pick up a business card of the hotel that they're staying at. So they can literally just flash you the business card and you know uh, there you, you're not going to get it wrong don't try and be the hero and try and you know get it right on the first time there's no shame in saying excuse me uh, is it this one or is it near to here or is it there confirmation is key here i've done it before in the cab and it, it never pays off so if, you, if you're ever really uncertain get them to show you on the phone say oh have you got it on google maps or something there's no shame in that obviously it's not the sort of thing you're going to do in a knowledge appearance um, but fundamentally, when you've got someone in the cab, they want to get there as soon as possible. You want to get there as soon as possible, because if you go to the wrong destination, you've just wasted your time and you're not then going to be able to charge double for it because it's your mistake. If you're going to a particular destination and you have a 50-50 split on which road to use, you know, sometimes there's uh, a couple of roads that are interchangeable. You know, you can use one over the other or a bridge. You know, you could use one bridge over another bridge and it doesn't really make too much difference in the length of time for the journey. My advice would always be to pick the first road or the road uh, or bridge uh, that's going to, like I say, naturally come up first. Reason being for this, if there's a problem with that bridge, a closure, then you just move on to the next one. You know, you're, you're driving that direction anyway, you can't to the bridge and you think, oh, it's closed, okay, I'll go for the next one. If you're trying to be really clever and try and shave so much time off the journey, and you think, right, I'll go for the second bridge or the second road, and then that road's closed, well, you're out of options. You've got to go back to the first road. So it's a bit embarrassing to sort of have to U-turn and come back on yourself. And for what? For the fraction of saving, say, 30 seconds off a journey. So go for that first bridge. Related to the first point of having someone write down uh, what the, the point is on the phone or showing you on a map, I always try and get the person to ask or give me their destination at the window. You can see them quite clearly, you can maintain eye contact, so then you can then understand you know, what their, their accent is. Because sometimes they just blur out, you've then got, uh, if they're foreign, you know, they're gonna have an accent, so that's gonna throw you off uh, you know, how you would then receive what that point is. Because um, the other trouble is as well, when they get in the back, it's quite habitual, people will just wanna jump in the back of the cab and go, you know, open the door. A lot of the time, they'll be asking for, or they'll be given the direction or what the place they want to go to as they've opened the door. So the wind comes in. It's an intercom system that goes from the back into the front. So that's another barrier there. And also they'll be shuffling around. There's a few of them getting in. You're not going to hear them as clearly. You can't really see them to kind of get all the information from them. So where best possible, I try and ask them at the window. And the other benefit as well is that when you ask them at the window, there's a little bit of time, a little bit of a lapse, and this can be quite important in some, some places. When they get in, you can then think about the route before they've sat down and then before you set off. If they get in the back and they're sat down and they give you the uh, address, you then feel compelled almost to sort of zoom off straight away. And that's my next tip. Don't, you know, try not to, to do, zoom off. Really think about it because again, it, it only comes back to bite you in the ass. If you think, right, I know this, boom, I'm gonna go. And you've not really thought it through. Sometimes it can be difficult because you've got to think about road traffic conditions that day, roads that might be closed, that sort of thing, in, on top of the route itself. If you zoom off really, really quickly without giving it prior thought, yeah, it might just cost you more trouble because you might get into the wrong road, that sort of thing. So really think about where you're gonna go. Bus lanes are absolutely king. If there's a bus lane around, absolutely use it. Some bus lanes, not so good, but my main one's going to be, you know, the Euston Road, Marylebone Road. If you're sort of in proximity to, the, to that road, you're going to jump on that because that's just like a, a super, super speedway, you know, like a motorway almost going through central London. Knowing how roads flow and how that subjects the route. Things like the Victoria Embankment, you want to get that westbound because that flows pretty well 
uh, for the most part. Um, but it depends when you want to come off and exit off. So just knowing certain roads, uses of bus lanes, things that you can do as a cab driver. It might not make the most logical sense when you're looking at it on a map perspective, when you're doing the knowledge, but in the cab, these things can really uh, accelerate you on through. Things as well like uh, no traffic lights. So some of the old classic runs uh, like Mr. Harvey's one that goes through like the Admiral Codrington down to uh, the, the sporting page public house on camera place. That's a good example of like a no light traffic run. You know, you can cut across all these wicked roads. You're not going to do it all the time because, of course, you've got to remember that every time you pull out of a junction, you have to stop, wait, give way, then pull out. So that can then compound and add time as well. Whereas if you was on the King's Road or the Fulham Road and all the lights turn green, you're going to go faster going in a straight line. So it's that balance between, do I take traffic lights? Do I take junctions? And linked onto that, it's very much easier to pull left out of a junction than it is to pull right out of a junction. I learned this off my dad actually because he used to be a courier driver. If he was in an industrial estate where he had multiple drops, he would go right down to the far end of the industrial estate where every time he pulled out of one of the um, separate units, it would always be a left turn out because if you turn that left, you've only got to give way to one way of traffic. If you're turning right, you've got to then look at two ways, which in a busy place like London can really make a, a difference to how the journey goes. So wherever you have that option being presented to you, you always want to try turn left out of that junction. Setting down on left is always going to be preferable so you're not doing a U-turn within the traffic. And lastly, talk to your passengers. This is one of the best tips, is that if you have a real interest and an enthusiasm in the passengers, you're going to get the most out of that journey. They might be able to teach you something new, they might be local to that area and they've lived there, you know, 20, 30, 50 years, so they know that area really, really well. But also, like, if you've got someone who's travelling across London, you might really be able to help them out. If someone's going to um, Paddington Station or down to the uh, Gatwick Express, uh, Victoria, then you know they're most likely going to be jumping on the Heathrow Express or the Gatwick Express to get to um, Heathrow. So I have some, some friends who um, aren't too shy. If there's like four people in the cab, you say, look, are you, are you going to Heathrow? And they say, oh, yeah, we are. Or, you know, you're having a nice conversation about it. Well, did you know it might be cheaper to get a cab? You know, you're already paying £15 or so to get to Paddington anyway. It's 20, 25 quid each for a ticket on the Heathrow Express it's going to be much less than that in the cab. So there's all these really good um, examples. It's almost like a little networking opportunity. If someone lives somewhere near you, you want to hand out a business card because they might want to rely upon you to get in and out of London one day. You never know where this work's going to come from. In the quiet times, it really, really does help out. So those are some of my top tips and tricks that I've learned since being in the cab. Thank you very much if you've enjoyed this video. Please do like, comment, and best of all, if you can subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Thanks a lot. I'll see you again soon. Take care.